channel welcome to wacky wednesdays ah! so for this episode of wacky wednesday i was to pick books that i would sell my soul to read again for the first time so it's like you don't know anything and you would erase all the information in your brain about reading that book or those books and just enjoy the ride. I thought going into this would be super easy as you can pick five or six thrillers and bada bing, we'd be done. Here's what I did. I picked a hard hitting contemporary a legal thriller, a domestic thriller, a regular thriller, and a fantasy? <laughs> what? And you know I don't read fantasy very often. So I was really thinking about this and there are some reasons for each of my choices, which we will talk about right here, right now. So get comfy, get something to drink, get a snack to eat. I don't think this is going to be a very long video, but you know, I still just want you to be comfy cozy with me. So we are going to start with my hard hitting contemporary. We're going to start with A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron. And the reason I would sell my soul to reread this, not knowing anything about it, although to be fair, I did see the movie before I read the book on this one. Sorry if you hear the fireworks. It's not the 4th of July, but people doing those fireworks anyway. Uh, but I would erase my memories of reading this and read it at a better time in my life. Like, I feel like I'm completely hooked onto a dog's purpose because of the memories associated with this book. Oh my gosh. Gosh, it's been years. It should just not hurt this much anymore. But here's the thing. I started this book. And then I had a real rough night with one of my doggos. And he had a seizure. He had a stroke. He had a stroke. And he had been sick for a little bit. And he was an older dog, but anyways, it was during COVID and I couldn't go back there with him. Like I would have been sitting there holding his paw and I, I was a freaking mess in the car because it was like midnight, 11 o'clock at night, midnight. It was late and... This was the only 24 hour vet that we could find and we weren't allowed back there. And anyway, he, uh, he was really sick. He had a lot of issues and I ultimately made the decision to put him down. And like, it was the best choice for him because he would have suffered. He would have suffered so badly. But it still hurts my heart. And I was in the middle of a dog's purpose. So my dumb ass the next day, my dumb ass finished this book. You know, I was already a sobbing mess from having to put my dog down. So I just decided, hey, let's finish a book about a dog. 
that like dies over and over and over. <laughs> that was the worst decision. I did not need that in my life at that moment. But because of that, because of how badly it wrecked my soul, and it stuck with me a hundred times more. I love this book full heartedly. And I highly recommend it. It is such a sad book though. But part of me wonders if I would have been smarter and not picked up this book right after putting my dog down like would it mean as much to me or does it take me back to Wyatt and him being sick and having to make that decision for him and like part of me thinks that this is an incredible book I love this book but I wonder if part of the reason that I'm so connected to it is because of timing and you know you could argue that about any book really but specifically this one is the one that sticks with me the most so i would reread it when i was in a better mental state when i didn't just put my dog down and everything but at the same time, like, if I'm being real with you, I think this is exactly the perfect read that I needed. Yes, it broke me. It shattered my soul. But it was what I needed in the moment, and it was very therapeutic. So I don't really know, but part of me does wonder how much of my attachment to a dog's purpose is with the memories of Wyatt <laughs> and how much is actually the book. I hope that makes sense and I know I went on a long tangent and I'm sorry. I'll try not to for all five of the ones that I picked but really no promises. <laughs> Alright so this one's not really a happy book but hopefully it won't make me cry. It didn't make me cry the first time I read it but this is a legal thriller, and this is Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. If I could go back and erase my memories and start this book over, I would not go in so blind. I didn't know anything about this book. All I knew is that everyone loved it. And here's the thing about me. When a book is super hyped on booktube, generally... I disagree with booktube and I don't like those books as much as everyone else does. There are situations where that's not true, like Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. But for some reason I just thought this was like a uh, no stakes contemporary. I thought there was some kind of mystery I had to solve, but I was not prepared for this one. So again, for the same reason as Dog's Purpose, I was not mentally ready to read this book. And this book is an emotional legal thriller, but it starts <laughs> with a mom being on trial for killing her eight-year-old boy who has autism. And that's like bam, bam, bam. Three strikes. Probably more, but mom, trial for murdering her eight-year-old who has autism. Autism is very close to my heart. And motherhood is very close to my heart. So I have a brother who is on the spectrum. And that's why autism is very close to me. I am, 
I have struggled with like not being able to have kids and there are reasons for that but I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole nother tangent that you guys are not prepared for but it's something that's like weighs heavy on me and <sighs> when a book opens it's a legal thriller but when it opens with the fact the knowledge that they think a mom would kill her own child and like don't get me wrong I know this happens in real life I know that people kill their babies and kill their children and <sighs> see I'm going on a tangent already but it just like breaks my heart because someone so I'm nowhere near perfect, but someone who wants kids so badly. Oh my gosh, this is just going to be me crying this entire video. <laughs> but someone who wants kids so badly. And then there are people out there that they have like that miracle of a child, of a baby. And they just murder them. And so for a book to start like that, I did not mean for this to be so emotional, but for a book to start like that, it just like ripped my heart out so badly. But basically you follow, this is a small town mystery, I would say, Young and Pack You family. And they have this like submarine in the middle of the forest, in the middle of Miracle Creek, Virginia, where they're trying this experimental treatment for autism. And you have one layer where the, where the protesters are there saying, you want to change your child? How can you do that to your child? They were born this way for a reason which is like very, very valid. And I was trying to put myself in that situation. Like if someone told me, I mean, they didn't really know he had autism when he was younger, but if someone would have told me that my brother could try this experimental treatment, but it might have these kind of side effects, like I don't know how, how that would have changed things for us like I don't know if we would have done it and like that has so many feelings and so many so many emotional elements for me too but then you it's a legal thriller so you get different perspectives for each chapter and it's like them being on trial telling you what they saw what they heard and uh their schedule and like what actually happened and when you finally figure out what happened to Henry the child who died it just like ripped my entire soul out of me and I would sell my soul <laughs> that has already been ripped out of me to uh, relive this, but kind of know what I'm getting myself into. Like know that it's not just a mystery, but it has so many emotional elements to it. And that I'm going to be low-key judging every person that was on the stand and low-key judging every single thought that I had while reading this book. So that's book number two. We're going to go to book number three, which I think is a domestic thriller. This one didn't make me cry. It's not emotional. So cry baby, stop. All right. So the third one. I'm so sorry. Okay. The third book is a domestic thriller. It's called The Wife Between Us by Geer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. So I read this towards the beginning of my thriller journey. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I've read so many thrillers now. 
but I think that I wouldn't stand by this being a five star and one of my all time favorite books if I reread it today because I have all that prior knowledge of thrillers and I've enjoyed so many different ones with different twists and different turns. But this one was like my introduction to thrillers, especially domestic thrillers, which a lot of people hate, but I like them. <laughs> um, but I would reread this now as an avid thriller reader and just really get to relive every second of it to know if it's something that I still stand by or not. Because now if I reread it, which, you know, maybe, potentially, but if I were to reread it today, I would already have those memories associated with them of this book, but it's like your typical domestic thriller. I don't think it's anything special now, but when I read it, it was just perfection. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I would try to reread this one. Next two are emotional again. I don't think I'm gonna cry for the next one, like on camera. I cried when I read it though. So it's an emotional thriller. So if I could sell my soul and reread an, a thriller, another thriller, it would be Here and Gone by Halen Beck. I'm so glad that I went into this with no prior knowledge of what this book is about. Because it's just perfect and I my head was spinning this entire book I think it's more of a mystery it's not like a, a thriller it's just more of a low-key mystery but I still loved it so you follow Audra yeah I got her name right you follow Audra who is leaving her abusive husband behind. That's where the emotions come in, but it gets better. There are two kids in the car seats in the back, or so Audra says. She gets pulled over by a police officer who then detains her and takes her to jail overnight. All night in jail. Audra keeps asking that same cop and all the other cops, where are my kids? What did you do with my kids? Where are they? Where are they? And every cop keeps telling her that she's lying. Her kids weren't in the car, that they were empty car seats. And now you wonder, well, what happened to those children? Did Audra really kill them? Or did she leave them with an abusive husband or an abusive father in Pennsylvania? Because she was going to California. She got stopped in Arizona. And, like, my mind was just twisting and turning. And, like, I was so enraged with just emotions because I wanted to know what happened to those children and I wanted to know if the mom was a liar or if the cop was a liar and like if Audra's lying then what happened to those children between Pennsylvania and Arizona. But if she's telling the truth, then what did the cop do to her children? This was terrifying. And not in your like jump scares, your horror type of scary. 
but like terrifying. I'm not a mom, but if I were, oh, and as the reader of this book, I was just like, I held on to every little thing that was said and I would reread it to see if I could figure out who was lying and who was telling the truth. Because the first time I read it, I just was full of emotions and I was not taking clues or not taking notes, but I would reread it and try to be less emotional, but I'm just a very emotional person, if you can tell. But I would try really hard to go in with less emotions and just take the notes and see if I could call what was going to happen. <sighs> Alright, the last book is a fantasy. And uh, it's an emotional fantasy, at least the ending was emotional. If you have any ideas what it is, pause here, let me know in the comments below what you think my only fantasy on this list is that I would sell my soul to read again. Kind of like uh, Addie LaRue who sold her soul so that she could live forever. The only thing is that she doesn't know that when she leaves the room, she will be forgotten. So it's a very lonely, sad, existence until 300 years goes by and uh, Henry remembers her in this bookstore where maybe dreams come alive. I would uh, reread this because I I enjoyed this book so much, but I just enjoyed the ride. I wasn't really in tune with the emotions that were going to be a part of this book because that ending, a lot of people said they saw it coming, but me, I was just enjoying the ride and I didn't predict it. But I do think it's a very predictable ending. Because how else are you going to end this book? But at the time when I read it, I just enjoyed it for what it was. I wasn't thinking with my emotions for once. Whoa! I wasn't thinking. I think I have a fever. I definitely have a fever. I was just enjoying the ride of this book and it caught me off guard but most people say that the ending didn't catch them off guard so I think it's a me thing and what I wanted to do with this last one was say that I wanted to go into this one with no expectations and like not think and like feel things more but like no I don't because see I went into this with super low expectations like I did not want to read this book but the thing is that I was doing this reading vlog I'll see if I can find it but <clears throat> where I was doing like a scavenger hunt of different books that I was gonna read and based on certain aspects of like Addie LaRue, I could be like, oh, okay, I could use the word invisible and find a different book with that, with that word in it. Or I could just be like, oh, it's a five-star book. Let me find a five-star prediction or whatever. I could use different elements of the book to find the next one. So I had read a couple books that my kind friend had sent to me for Christmas or my birthday. I don't know. She sent me a couple of gifts 
And I was like, okay, well, since we read two of the books she sent me, how about we end this reading vlog by reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab because I think like a month before that, she had texted me and she's like, oh my gosh, have you read this? And I'm like, no, I'm not really interested. And she's like, I can't believe you're not interested. You need to read it. And <laughs> it probably didn't go exactly like that. But Amanda, it's my channel and my story. So that's how, <laughs> so that's how I'm telling the story. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, okay, let's end this reading vlog by reading this. I'm going to hate this book. I think I read it in like 36 hours. <laughs> and I was just in love with this entire thing. So I think I would go in maybe not with such negative feelings towards this book because it took me about half the book before I started to really enjoy it. And I think if I would have gone in without my preconceived notations that I was going to hate this book and that's not worth my time and all those things which I apologize for, Addie LaRue, I apologize, girl. Then maybe I would have had a more fun time from the very beginning. But we'll never know because I can't go back in time and I can't erase my memories of this amazing book. <sighs> so that is my installment of Wacky Wednesdays for <laughs> this uh, video. We got a little personal. We got a little emotional. I apologize for that. It wasn't all about the books, it's a little bit about me too, and my feelers, my feelings. So, I uh, highly recommend all five of these books. I will see you guys later. Bye.